Okay, so welcome to Table Flip and Board Games. We may have made too many dice. Oh, correct. We made the game basically crash, like everything's lacking because he made too many dice. And then Game Face Killer made a really funny joke where he said we were playing on dial up and then he made a dial up reference, which is basically the best thing in the world. <laughs> if you want to do that again. I don't no? know. <laughs> right, it was a, a one time event. It was, it a one -time was good. Event. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we should so, probably introduce the show yeah we're gonna introduce the show and while i do that you are going to pay for making all of this dice by going through and deleting the dice so that we can show the actual art of the game in our review which is what we're supposed to be doing i'm on it so while you do that hey guys this is table flipping board games i am gillyweed one of the hosts joining me are my other host the annoying ogre yonder and Hello. the great at impressions game face killa and we just played Shadows of Brimstone. If you missed that play session, you can find that play session on uh, our Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash misclicks or youtube.com slash misclicks. Or you don't have to watch it because it was kind of a mess. But that's, that's up to you. <laughs> and we will uh, be happy with you supporting us if you choose to do so. Uh, speaking of supporting us, be sure to support misclicks by following us on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter and Facebook. We are all about uplifting females in the geek and gaming scene. And we have lots of different shows with female um, hosts and co-hosts, including this one and ones about video games too. And with that, Shadows of Brimstone, once again, just a little bit of an overview game face, if you don't mind. Yeah, so this is, uh, I'm not, I'm kind of not surprised that we've had kind of this, the reaction to it because the people I've played with, um, different groups have had kind of similar reactions. Some people really don't like it because there is a lot of variability. This has the same problem as Betrayal does where things are either very quiet and not much is happening like when we were exploring some of those rooms uh, or you get to the point where there's just so many monsters but yet you can bottleneck them. So you really don't have much that you can do the whole time. And then if you have one die that you're rolling to hit anything, um, your turn can be over pretty quickly. Um, but this is a cooperative game. There are, there are the, Some of the benefits of it is that it's a dungeon crawl game. Um, there are some things that are kind of strange about it, like, for example, the fact that it doesn't really matter if there's a fork in the road which fork you take um, because one's not. they're both going to... Uh, you know, eventually lead to the same place, uh, which is in this scenario anyway. There are some scenarios where there's a set map, and I haven't tried those yet, but I wonder if maybe they might add a little bit more uh, of the dungeon-type feel to it, where you have to take one way or the other. Um, but I haven't really experienced much of the game of the campaign beyond the first one, because most of the groups that I've played with have kind of given up after one or two tries at hmm. the first scenario. Hmm. What um, was the rating of Board Game Geek for this game? It was like an eight point something. Eight point... Uh, I've got it right here. Out well, of ten? Eight point two five. Average rating. But I think one of the... So I think one of the problems is that this game is very long. This was actually the shortest game I've ever played of this. I will say that this is the most successful game I've ever played this first scenario because yes. we still had our revive token left. Nobody died. Um, and I would say that normally I've played this game for probably another hour or two before somebody won. Wow. <gasps> yeah. Well, to we, be fair, though, we did kind of do a simulation for the end of it. We had That's to. True. Yeah. I mean, My brain was mush. When I've played, I, we've actually had at least three or four more rooms, and that includes like maybe another five. Oh, or two. really? Yeah. Wow. So it's kind so of we surprising. Just, we got lucky, yeah, and we yeah. cut it a little. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think I did it. I'm proud of yeah. you. Thank Thanks. you. I'm gonna stop messing um, with the dice now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll start off with things I liked, which were few. But the premise is really freaking cool. The premise is cool. Wild West versus Arkham. I heard that, and I have been dying to play this game. I am so heartbroken that I hated this game as much as I did. Because I was so pumped for the premise. And I liked basically nothing of it. Um, 
So that, that sucks. Then I was like, you know what? But we have a story and that's really cool. And even that was ruined by the fact that there was no end to the story after we were done with the scenario. What the heck? So we had like this really cool setup and then like nothing at the end of it. It was like, you just get your experience and you can upgrade your items with Darkstone. Good job. That's the end. Like, no, with the rousing defeat or the cry of a thousand spiders, you are victorious and you pick up the Darkstone and you sprint out of there as you hear more calls to the darkness or anything like that. No, just you get D6 Darkstone and 25 experience. Great job. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Yeah. That was, that's, I was like, come on. The story was literally the best part that you had and you didn't even end it. And that made me sad. Yeah, I think one of the things that is my main complaint about the game is that it tries to do everything. Um, yeah. It tries to give you all kinds of little tokens and gear and cards and different kinds of loot. There's, there's loot cards, there's scavenger cards, there's artifact cards. And then if you get have the other dimension, there's loot cards and scavenge cards and artifact cards for the other worlds too. But if you look at each of the decks, there are only like 10 or 12 cards in each of the decks. Yeah, so, I could not imagine the setup. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of like there's not a lot of depth to any one um, aspect. And that might be, like you were saying with the story, if they had decided to go delve a little bit deeper and add a little yeah. bit more to the campaign story and everything, that, that might have made a, like, a bigger difference. Like, what the heck... What are these? We didn't even get to this. What is a swamp fern, swamp <laughs> fern nut and uh, har jargano frog saliva? Like, what are these things? We didn't even touch those. This game was needlessly complicated. There were like <laughs> so many rolls. You rolled to see if you had to roll. That was like the level of <laughs> rolls that this crap had. I'm serious, you did. There were things that you rolled just to see if you could roll. I was like, what? is happening so many i and and i say that i say this knowing that i very very rarely say that something is needlessly complicated a board game is needlessly complicated in fact there is one other game i have said that about <laughs> and that game deserved it too dang it what was the name of that one which one the the one you tried to teach me with mom and mom was oh, like oh the uh, time what's the time I don't even... oh the one we're gonna play tragedy looper tragedy we're looper we're never playing that tragedy we looper play it yeah we're gonna play it ogre it needs is... to see this game I do it's just, you're, just, you're you're gonna have two more hours of me raging like this <laughs> it's I think you'll like it complicated more. I love complex games guys Arkham is my favorite game I like complex games when they if there's a point to it. This is needlessly complicated, and I think it really touches on what you talked about, Game Phase, where it's just like it wants to do everything, and so it excels at nothing. The fighting oh. sucked. We'll get into that later, but go ahead. Oh, can I tell you really quick what happens when you go to town? Yes, I want to know. <laughs> I want to know what happens when you go to town. Please, okay, hold on. Please. Which one of these tablets it. do we get to break out? <laughs> all, all of them. So can we yeah. talk about the, the, the rolling of the double? Like doubles rolling? Yeah. Oh god, this game. So oh. what, what happens when you go to town is on the way to town you have to roll to see if there's an encounter or some kind of event that happens. And then on, could be on your way to town? Yeah. So it, it could be something before you <laughs> to town that does more damage to you or takes away some of your items or you know, so on. It could be something good. So then you get to town and you have to decide if you're going to stay in a campsite outside of town where it's more like <laughs> it's more like another event is going to happen. Or if you stay in the hotel. See, here's the town map here. If you stay in the hotel, you have to spend 10 of your gold per day. And then each hero has to decide how many days they're going to stay. And every time, every day you have to go to one store. And spend your money and dark stone <laughs> at the different stores, but you can only go to one store per day. So if you want to go to four stores, you're going to have to spend forty gold, forty dollars, and stay <laughs> for a couple days, or stay at the campsite for free. Every night there could be an event that happens at the campsite. At the campsite, uh... yeah. And every time you go to a place like one of the buildings, you can see you have an event that you have to roll for. <laughs> 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 depending oh, good. on cult happens. worshipers show up at the church <laughs> yeah <laughs> which can take your horror you know take your sanity take your hit you know your health away yeah awesome but hey awesome. there's no the general store that's where you can buy some of those cool tokens you were looking at 
Oh, can I, oh, I can buy whiskey so at the general store. Can yeah. we even, like, what happens with these corruptions? He just gets tentacle tokens for the rest okay. of time? Yeah, so what oh, happens? Oh, yeah, what's up with that? Once you get five corruption, you have to take one of these <laughs> corruption mutations randomly. Yeah. Hey, let's guys, let's see, let's see what I would have gotten. A dead. tentacle leg! Tentacle guys, leg. I would have gotten a tentacle leg. <laughs> so he gets to move one less space every turn. Well, that's all right. I mean... But, if, but I think if you go to the doctor's office, he can remove that tentacle leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can, <laughs> he can. You can remove a mutation, <laughs> but it's a. There's a possibility he. But it's a surgery. To to die. <laughs> so he can box the surgery. Wait, wait. The surgery costs D six <laughs> times fifty gold. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like really. Expensive. Oh, good. They and they, he can kill you. Six this board games with what they've put into this one. Your hero no dies on the table during the surgery so attempt. <laughs> That's not good, because then we have to go to the church and revive you, which is probably also another role. <laughs> oh, my God. No, it just costs 500 per hero level. Oh. Well, all right, then. <laughs> I, I think we killed Gilly. <laughs> so... While she's I away, out of my chair. <laughs> while while she's away, I'm gonna say. Um, so first of all, I'm dying. I I really liked a lot of this game. What yeah. are you saying? <laughs> so and here's the reason. Here's the reason. I can see what they were getting at. They no, did uh, give no. Them the hold on. Of the doubt. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, I'm not giving the this benefit of the doubt. The no. Game they've made. They should have no. crap. Now. No, they should have. Okay, here's the thing. This isn't a board game. This is this is awesome. a this is a complete what? documented automated DM system. Yeah. That this is what this is. This is a Dungeons and Dragons <sighs> instance that has been in, where the DM has been entirely replaced by dice rolls. And, and charts. And charts. Yeah, it's it's dice rolls and charts. It's it's Dungeons and Dragons without the DM. That's what this is. It's yeah. like they they played they played D and D. We're like, man, you know, it'd be really cool if none of us had to DM and none of us knew it was going to happen. So that's what they yeah. made. The problem is D and D has a DM for a reason, and <laughs> yeah. like it, it's to it's to handle all of the crazy contingencies that you have to come up with, and for stuff like. So here, so so the the movement. Tentacle leg? Are you talking about? Are you didn't bring up tentacle leg? No, I'm I'm, I'm going to talk about something really basic that I think okay. is complete that is like fundamentally broken about this game. So okay. the movement system. Yeah. Um, is this is this a, going into combat? This like is going into combat. So bottlenecking. Oh, the fact okay, that good. we can bottleneck for like just ever by having two by having two people in there is ridiculous. That you should the not game. be able to do that. So it, boring. It makes it so our boring and battle? unnecessarily long. Yeah, yeah. Our final battle was like an hour of literally us taking the same yeah. turn over and over and, and over and over. And seeing if we can roll again. and Yeah. It's literally so how this would have how this would have panned out with the DM, because I've actually DM'd campaigns that this that you know, you swarms of stuff attack you happening, right? They like, okay. So here's what's happening. Give you a description of, you know, the ten thousand void spiders coming down the walls, right? Roll a d20, maybe a couple d20s. I'm going to roll a couple d20s. We're going to see what plays out, right? right? And then you kind of get a description of this is how the fight went. This is how much health, you know, damage you took. This person died. You guys are on fire, like whatever, right? And the problem is because you don't have a DM in this to do that part, you kind of have to simulate the entire thing yourself. And that's why I can. That's why I said I can see what they were getting at. I can see that so they were trying to give that experience. Points but... for trying. Mm -hmm. No, well, okay, basically. like. So okay, here's here's what I think here's what I think would make this game awesome. You take all of the dice rolling and you put it in an app because they've clearly done the back work, like the work to think of all of the different scenarios, like all the different contingencies and the, all of this crazy detail over here and all these charts and like all the different effects that your characters can have and special items. Like I thought it was cool that you could get like a personal item that defines kind of who your character is. Yeah, take all of that cool. stuff and plug it into an app where you can push a button and say, what's going to happen next? Mm -hmm. Because that way we don't have to sit here and, and like physically roll dice over and over and over again. As much as I like mm -hmm. rolling dice, and I think that the system they had was pretty good, it's just not fast enough. Like, uh, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah. The bottlenecking what? is awful. It's, and what? it's not at all strategic either. No, it's not. Like, you just you sit there. You stick two people there, and then you fight 
two people at a time over and over yeah. and over and over again. Sorry, Game Face, go ahead. That's okay. I was just going to say one thing I really like about the dice rolling is probably the only thing I like about the dice rolling because um, I agree there's way too many things, but uh, as far as why you have to roll dice, what I, I didn't like at first was the idea of rolling defense against hits, mm -hmm. but it does kind of add this interesting like tension in, oh, he just hit me for six hits, and if I don't dodge these, I could die. Mm -hmm. And so then now is my chance to dodge them, and I'm simulating that by die rolling. And it's a – yeah, it is a very slow process, but I like the kind of tension yeah. at times. But only if you're fighting – I think part of the problem too is there's way too many monsters that can spawn. Yeah, yeah. there are a lot spawn of monsters. Spawn fewer monsters yeah. so, that hit harder. Yeah, right? that, and that's – Why that's, not – like th two of those night night terror things mm -hmm. instead of 20 spiders are you kidding me yeah. like we can yeah. bottleneck the spiders we had people who could not have bottlenecked those terrors that would have been far more strategic and fun so and that, was, that, go ahead oh, sorry oh i was just gonna say there is a monster if it was a large monster there is a large type monster that smashes through those other smaller ones. Oh, and just like runs up? And runs up to people. But the problem is, is once he's up there, then he's bottlenecked. <laughs> so it's yeah. not yeah. really much of a difference. So yeah. this room, um, I'd like to contrast this to, uh, what's the game? It's not It's not Descent. It's um, the the one that you have all the plastic figures for that uh, you and Jofos play occasionally. Descent? Is Descent. it Descent? Yeah, yeah. The, is okay. it, are you talking about the fantasy one or the Star yeah the, Wars the one? fantasy one? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so like in in Descent it does this far better. Yeah, there are you know small or there are strong monsters that have you know unique movement and unique sizes and the battlefields are much more open, so you can actually have like strategic placements and all that sort of stuff. Right. Yes. And I think that that like you take the Descent battle system that is that is just a great way of doing it put that in this game and i think that it would have gotten a lot better yeah that's what i don't get is they had a model <clears throat> descent has been around for forever mm -hmm. they have a model for what they were trying to do and descent works very well it is a it is a great game there's yeah. a lot of dice rolling and a lot of dice rolling mm -hmm. that i hate but <laughs> i still would rather play that than this because i was sucking at a lot of the dice rolling on this and like literally nothing was mm. happening i was yeah. sitting there well and you can't even because the thing is you you have to bottleneck so you can't even move yeah like, yeah you're like <laughs> it, okay it was... you you roll your you roll your movement half like every i don't know much more than half of my movement rolls were useless because just i just trying to see if you got grit. just trying to see if i got grit yeah. that was it and, yeah and, well, and, let's and let's do rolling for <laughs> movement for a second because yeah. this is the third game correct that they have done the roll yes. for movement system mm -hmm. on and let's be honest it is a that. stupid mechanic that's like what fantasy or not fantasy flight like flying frog it's a mechanic they have in all of their games and it's just dumb and the reason <laughs> is when you roll just give every character a set movement and then you can plan out your turns because what you do is you plan your turn you're like i i want to do this and then you roll a one and you're like oh here's a consolation prize you rolled a one but what if you get a two still shitty like still bad but mm -hmm. you get you actually get nothing then and the consolation right. prizes are never worth never worth just being able to move so like just give a set movement so you know like oh i can't reach that thing this turn but you know it and it's like oh i picked this character so that's you know right. that's what i get that's my choice mm -hmm. not this like lame i'm gonna roll for movement and oh no i stubbed my toe so i move one <laughs> space this turn it's just it's a dumb mechanic that slows down the game it makes you really frustrated needlessly fr or un yeah needlessly frustrated mm -hmm. in the game and it's on old. top of the other things that are frustrating frustrating yeah and it's an old mechanic like that's from like the clue the days of clue and sorry oh, yeah and all those other games i mean yeah it is i don't know why that's still in with them it's i don't know that, that is a big to get, it, it does yeah, seem, it does seem weird so because for it too because they've had it in every single game what's yeah. and what confuses me is that it board games are not video games right yeah. you want to play strategically because you don't get to take turns very often and some games are just you know just physically you can't take turns frequently because each turn requires mechanics and thinking it's not right. like 
it's not like a, a video game where you just, you know, you click and things happen immediately and you can kind of do this, you know, constant action thing. It's like, it's almost like they were trying to get, make it an action game. Right. And that they expected you to take turns so, so much that it just kind of balances out over time and then, you know, it doesn't really make a difference, which I can, I can kind of see that. But like, cause our turns, honestly, our turns were pretty quick once we figured out what to do. Yeah. But on the other hand, I also feel like our turns were so fast because there was so little to do. We didn't move. Yeah. We sat bottlenecked. Yeah. And then yeah. it's like, if you're going to have rooms where nothing, nothing is going on, just give us movement. Like, okay. Oh yeah. Just like, roll, let us move to the end of the room. for movement when there's monsters in the room and you have to see if you get held up or something. But right. when there's no monsters in the room, why are you rolling for movement? It's so dumb. It's just like a, such a stupid mechanic that I've hated in every single one of their games. The one that's made sense to me was last night on earth, which by the way, I have fun mm. playing with that one guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, Yay. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, God, I hate that mechanic so much. Yeah. I, I mean, on one, it, and then another thing, another argument against using it is it's like, Hey, Guys, we already have like 10 million times when people are rolling for things. So maybe we could take out one uh, <laughs> yeah. other dice roll. Just one, one of those. Sm you know? Small dice roll. <sighs> That's kind yeah. of insignificant. Yeah. Can we, can we talk about those cards that are like take two hits? Yeah, take two hits of sanity. So you roll two and then you're like, oh, now I have to see if I actually take those hits is like can we just can we simplify that to one to one roll is it so is it <laughs> such a in like a strange like well, card that we need to have to roll twice so for those on top like i get the combat like the combat kind of made sense and i was actually okay with the amount of rolling that was in the combat that's about the same as descent actually uh -huh. But they, those cards were so dumb. Like the amount of, that you had to roll for each one was just like, oh, I got, I rolled a hit, so now I have to see if I defend that hit or if it matches up with my willpower, and I don't take that hit. It's just like just roll one dice. If you take the hit, you okay. take the hit. Okay. So, so you want to know my uh, my personal take on this? Sure. I, I think somebody has a D6 fetish. <laughs> like they were like, I want, I bet I can make the entire game using nothing but D6s. <laughs> And they're like, oh, crap, I actually want something that's not, you know, based on some multiple of a sixth in percentage. So maybe I got to combine D6s in order to make this work and have varying thresholds on the different roles. Yeah. It's like, guys, just just use a D20. Just put a D20 yeah. in there and then just set a different number and you can make it whatever you want. It's so easy. Yeah. yeah. Like, we, have the, we have the one D8, the single D8 already, and we have these random brown dice. Yeah, yeah these ones that roll forever. I don't I don't actually understand the purpose of so these dice specifically. So I think what they're for is because they're designed so that there are no ones and twos. I see. So don't there's they? yeah, oh, there's, yeah there's three, every, four. Yeah. Three, four, oh. five, and then one six, I think. So you're always gonna get at least three mm. or four or five or six out of them. I was wondering how I rolled so high on these consistently. Yeah. yeah. Um I'll also talk about experience because oh, yeah. What, yeah. experience okay. in a game that you're not going to continue. I mean, it makes a lot of sense if you're going to continue the campaign, but it's useless for us if you're just doing a one-off scenario. So like either just don't play with it or give something else instead or something. So or let you or let you go back, mm -hmm. like give you more money and let you go back and spend your money. Cause like, this is completely useless if you're just going to play it one time. Well, there, there isn't really, this is all designed to play the campaign. I is don't it? think they, yeah, okay. they don't have like a one off. There's, there's no introductory. That's what I was about to ask. There's no like introductory mission, kind of learn the game. This is the introductory mission, oh, um, all right. but, but it's part the first step of the campaign. Okay. Gotcha. And tech, I guess really we could have just not kept track. If you want to play a one-off, mm -hmm. you could just not keep track of XP. Um, yeah. And then really gold because there's nothing you're going to be able to do with it while you're in the mine. Mm -hmm. But like, here's my question. Say we were just like, let's play scenario three. Mm -hmm. Does it give you options then for like upgraded heroes or characters or whatever? Or do you have to play from the beginning and play through the campaign? So it kind of does one of the things that I hate when you make a campaign, which is it kind of gives you the option to do it how you want. You could play them in order or you could play them logically. Like there's this one where 
somebody gets kidnapped and you have to go into the mines to find them. And then the, there's another scenario that has to do with uh, someone being corrupted or something like that. So you could link them thematically or you could just play them in order. And it just basically says you can do whatever you want. Which what I don't if you like want to just that. play a random one? Like, let's just, yeah, so you know, because Descent, you can all, play random, yeah. like, scenario four. So, supposedly, they're all pretty even. It it basically says you shouldn't have to rebalance them. But I have a feeling, if this is just the introductory mission, there's absolutely no way you could then, play the harder missions without, like, better gear. Yeah, I was going to say, then how do you... How do you justify getting experience and playing them in order? Do the monsters <laughs> get harder? Uh, no, actually, this is the hardest that the monsters get. We've the only one that we've fought or that we haven't fought that's harder than that the nightmare beast or whatever it was. The what's mm -hmm. it called? Night terror. Night terror. Yeah, who kept this feeling Goliath. He's like the big boss. And so we, we didn't have to fight him. I'm very confused. Then you can play whatever scenario you want, starting at base level with heroes, mm -hmm. but you can also play them in order. And gain experience and money to get better gear and level up your character, and yet they don't change the difficulty of the scenarios. Oh, once you start to gain a certain number of levels, then you play with harder threat cards. So we were playing with medium level threat cards. Okay. So then after after everybody that's – if you add up everybody's experience levels, once it gets to a certain point, then you start playing with these high level threat cards, which usually have more monsters – or only strong monsters. See, like this oh, card right grief. here is like P stranglers, P tentacles, and roll the P die twice for void spiders. Mm. All in one room. <laughs> so basically they just make the game longer because yeah. you're fighting more things more. that are tougher for a longer amount of time and you're bottlenecking them the same way. Right. I don't, I don't like making the game longer as a way of making it harder. That's not a good Well, mechanic. I mean, technic technically, you might it might be about the same length because you have more players or your players mm -hmm. are stronger, so they're killing stuff faster, but I don't think it's going to be much of a difference. I think you're right, is that it's going to end up being longer. Yeah, I'm, I'm... I don't know, man. Oh, we reached know. the four-hour phone limit. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, let's reform this call. Okay. All right, guys. We'll have it right back here. Just a second. Hello. Hello again. Hello. So, okay. uh, yeah, I, I completely agree. I think it's one of those games that I was really hoping would be better than than what it plays out to be, and it's I just wish there was a way to play it faster. Like I felt we, we were part, mm -hmm. we were probably playing as fast as you could possibly play. Mm -hmm. I definitely, yeah, I definitely felt like I had a good command of the game's mechanics and I knew what to do and I just mm -hmm. needed to do it faster. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I'm I'm eh. I'm totally eh about this game. I actually could not decide if I was forced to either play this or Eldritch. I think I would probably <laughs> play Eldritch, and I did not think that that was was possible. But maybe this is me tilted, and like looking back with an open mind, I won't think that. But right now, at least, I mean, I I feel like both games. I basically did nothing but stand in a spot, and that's exactly how I feel with Eldritch too. So, yeah. I don't know. Um, that's my review, guys. Sorry, <laughs> Flying Frog. You've made better games. I love the premise, though. That was such a cool premise. And I like the amount of work that you put into it. That's really cool, but I it's, do, it's too complicated. About, speaking about the art, I do like oh, the yeah. art better than the previous game's art. Um, not that I yeah. mind the kind of cheesy photographs, but I think that was kind of done. And I'm glad that, that you guys decided to go with actual paintings, uh, painted mm -hmm. drawings. Um, they're really detailed. They're they really look awesome. Um, one of yeah. one of oh, sorry, I forgot to mention one other thing. The actual if you decide to buy this game as a physical game, get ready to spend a lot of time putting the physical models together. They're not painted, and they're on. If you've ever put together a model, they're on those little die cast pieces. So you have to cut them off and glue oh, them together. Really? 
Yeah, just like a model. Oh, and man. some of the pieces don't fit very well together. So you also need, if you're going to end up painting them and making them look good, you're going to need like putty to fill in the cracks. And um, for as much money as people kicked in for Kickstarter, it's I'm surprised that the models weren't yeah, already you say like it was like printed. Like more than a million dollars? Yeah, it was like 1.3 million. That's a lot of money for this game. Yeah. I wanted... I did want to say one of my favorite things that games do, this one did, which is all characters of the male and female version. That I think is they definitely really, deserve praise for that. They do deserve praise for that because I've only ever seen one other game do that. And it was it makes me so happy when they do that because that way you still get to play the character you want. But if you're like me and you're like, I want to play a cool female, you can totally do that. Yeah. But you're not limited to whatever ones they decided were the female ones, right? So you yeah. can play U.S. Marshal and be a guy or a girl. And the girl U.S. Marshal looks a lot like Taylor Swift, in my opinion. <laughs> and, like, the the p piano to saloon girl didn't make much sense to me, but I guess they're trying to make it more like the, the standard stereotype or whatever. Yeah. Well, people at a saloon. Yeah, the people at the for. saloon, and it was generally the the guy playing the piano and then... Yeah. Um, the saloon girl, but yeah, the bandita is really cool. Like they all, all the female characters look really cool. Yeah. And I thought the art I, was great in general. Yeah, the art was really good. That's true. And you're right. Like the old, the other art was like really campy. For their other games, so maybe that's where all the money went. Is on art. cool art. Yeah, SS Desto asked um, if how long the game time is. I guarantee you that this was the, probably the fastest game time I've ever played. If you play and you're just learning the game, it's going to take you four or five hours at least, if not longer. Oof. It's crazy how long it yeah, is. Yeah, we, we played and at least three and a half just, hours. So. Yeah, sitting there bottlenecking. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, it's. Uh, I've had some really fun experiences and... and some very frustrating ones that take forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, of, too much variability in the game for sure. Mm -hmm. And too many yeah. things to do. <laughs> See, that's, and that's, I don't know, not to get off on too much of a design rant, but like, if you're going to have a lot of variability in your game, it needs to be short. Yeah. Because that way people will be like, oh, well, that one kind of sucked, but you know, at least it didn't take very it's long. Right. Maybe I'll yeah. try it again sometime. When you like, if, if we had lost this, then I mean, I could probably guarantee we wouldn't even have had as positive a response as we did. Like just because, you know, you get, you, you get that feeling that like, Oh, the game just screwed us and there's no possible way it could be good. And yeah. it's like, took so long, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I would probably play it again, but try to find, I don't know. I'm a big fan of house rules. So mm -hmm. maybe find house rules that work around some of the dice rolling, like, inter you know, doing the math on some of the dice rolls and being like, okay, this is equivalent to like this set of 10 dice in sequence is equivalent to a D20 plus this or like two D20s <laughs> right. or whatever. Or just right. like get a computer program and write a couple things in there and be like, okay, roll it, figure out what's going to happen. I don't mm -hmm. actually need to go through the physics of doing all of this stuff because yeah, it just takes a long time. Yeah. Because, because yeah, like Lily said, the story is is really or like the premise is really interesting. I do wish that there was more of a story. I should didn't have really been mention an that end earlier. To the story. There should have been an end to the there story. Should have been an end. Yeah. If you were going to open up with a cool, how difficult is it to write the end of the story? I mean, really, how mm. tough is it? You've already written the beginning. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's not difficult to write the. Oh, I'm I'm tilted again. Make it so that the make it so that the old prospector at the end was the devil the whole time. Yeah, yes. or like he, you walk out and he like falls to dust or something, and you're like, "Ooh, <laughs> yeah. spooky!" And then you roll a sanity. I don't know something, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. So yeah, I agree. It was. Uh, I'm glad we played it, mm -hmm. but I probably won't play it again. Yeah, yep. it's uh, it's not one that I'm too excited about coming back to. I probably would only play it if someone hasn't played it and they're really interested, really interested in, the, in it. Yeah, so basically like, what happened this time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You kept it really close, by the way. You did not say anything mm -hmm. about yeah, what you thought say, of it before. Yeah, I try not to say too much. Although I, I had, I, I wanted to really like the campaign. I, I want to get a good game that has a good campaign. But I think like what Ogre was saying is, 
it's just so much of a time commitment that I don't want to play the longer non-introductory missions if it's going to take, you know, two or three times as long. <laughs> yeah. Although I guess if you're just going to play a couple hours and then save it here, that might not be too bad, but yeah, eh, that's a lot of work. Yeah. It would take a long time. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe this is, um, this is me totally just spitballing here. I have no idea if this is going to be a thing, but tabletop simulator, if they start allowing people to write mods, maybe mm-hmm. they will use some of that sweet Kickstarter money and make a mod that has a lot of the rules built in. Yeah, it, buttons, is... it does stuff like you know you can save the game in between so we can hop on play for an hour and not have to go through all the setup. I don't know, maybe that would yeah. help. Yeah. yeah. So just I don't know, random idea, but yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think have we covered everything, guys? I think yep. so. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, Gilly, you want to take us out here? Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Can you turn your mic off? Thank you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this experience that we've brought to you, whatever <laughs> it may be. Next week uh, is uh, Arkham, right? Next week is Arkham, and I'm oh, going to be pretty wow. pumped. Game Face will not be here, which is unfortunate. But I, we're... I may try to jump on the Twitch and chat with people. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be awesome. Cool. Yeah, that'd be a first for me. We're having Sylvanora join us, which is going to be really, really excited. I'm so excited to have her on. And then we also may have Joe Foes filling in. So one brother for another, as they're both my brothers. <laughs> and we're from the same mother. We all are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> Uh, thanks for that. Uh, <laughs> you can follow all of us. You can follow Game Face for uh, board game stuff, Ogre for programming stuff, some heroes. And I'm basically all heroes all the time, but a little bit of board game stuff too uh, on our social media, which is on the overlay, I believe. And then you be sure to also follow Miss Clicks. Thank you, Miss Clicks, for having us as this show so that we can rant about board games like these. <laughs> With that, next week, El- or, uh, no, not Eldritch Horror. Whew, gosh, can you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be Arkham later. Arkham Horror. Nope. November. And tragedy. Ark- <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Arkham Horror, and that's the end of it. Goodbye, and goodbye forever. Crazy, crazy game that is Shadows of Brimstone. <laughs> Never again. <laughs>